Hey guys and welcome back to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to show you the often overlooked grid tools in Adobe Illustrator. Let's head onto the computer now and we'll have a look. So in Illustrator we have our template file open. Do be sure to check out the link in the description where you can download this same template file for free and work along with us from home. Within this file we have three artboard set up. So this first one we have the examples of the kind of thing we can create with the grid tools. Over to the right hand side we'll take you through the basics of each of these grid tools and further right still we're going to create some of our own designs with these tools. So back over on the left hand side you can see with the help of these tools we can create some quite interesting looking designs. These are obviously just a couple of examples of using these tools. They have many other uses but this is the kind of thing that we can create. So over on our second artboard here we have some guides for the use of each of these tools. Now they can be found over in the left hand toolbar sitting under the line segment tool. So if I click and hold on the line segment tool down at the bottom we have two options. There's the rectangular grid tool and the polar grid tool. So I'll select the rectangular grid tool to begin with and this works in the same way as our shape tools so I can simply click and drag and you can see I'm getting a kind of grid of rectangles here so depending on the way I click and drag this out we can create rectangles similar to the rectangle tool if I hold shift this will lock this to a perfect square so we're naturally getting a perfect grid here. Now I can also use my arrow key on the keyboard if I tap the up and down arrows I can add more rows here and if I use my left and right arrows I can add or remove columns so we can quickly and easily create grids this way. You will notice though if I have fewer rows than columns we're going to get a more rectangular grid if I hold shift so I can take this right down to be a square if I just press my left and down arrows and then I can start adding in rows and columns this way as well. At the moment I don't have anything applied to this but this just works in the same way as any object in Illustrator. I can go and add a stroke to this. We'll just add a black stroke and give it a bit of weight here. I can add a fill as well and that's just going to apply to the whole thing. Okay I'm going to delete this for now. Another way we can create these again similar to the shape tools is I can just click once on the artboard and we actually get a dialog box popping up and we can actually plug in the details that we want. So we can set the overall size of it with our width and height values. We can set the number of rows and columns with these settings here as well. But I'm just going to click cancel and we'll try and recreate the grid we have in our template here. So I'm just clicking and dragging. So we need to add a few more rows and columns here. So again, just with my arrows, this is the easiest way I find to add in rows and columns to our grid. So that matches our template file. So I'm just going to click and release and we have our rectangular grid here. Now over on the right hand side, we have the polar grid tool. So this is doing the same kind of thing, but for a more circular grid. So over on the left hand side again I can just click and hold and select our polar grid tool and again with this tool I can click once and we get our same dialog box here. We can set the width and height and we can set things like the concentric dividers and radial dividers and I'll show you what they are in just a second. I'm going to click cancel for now. So if I click and drag with this one we can drag out a polar grid here and this works in the same way if I use my arrow keys. If I press the up and down arrows I can add more concentric dividers so that's just adding sort of more circles to this. The spacing between each of them is completely consistent so that's where these tools are very helpful. You can quickly and easily create a very perfectly spaced grid very quickly. If I use my left and right arrows, I can add more radial dividers. These are the straight lines cutting through the circles. Again, I can take this back down to nothing and we can just have the circles if we want. So it's just working in the exact same way. If I click on this, everything is going to be selected. So when I click and move this around, we have all of the circles selected. I can right click and ungroup. I need to click again and ungroup group for a second time and we can then just access each individual circle this way. I'm just going to delete this for now, we'll grab our polar grid tool again and again we're just going to try and recreate our example here. I can do the same as we can with shapes or other objects, go to the center of this template and if I hold shift 
and Alt, I can scale out from the middle. What I'm going to do first though is add my dividers back in. So with my right arrow key, you can see we can just add these in easily this way. So that looks correct now. And there we go. So those are the basics of each of these tools. Over to the right hand side, we will show you some interesting ways we can use these. And we're going to use these together with the Shape Builder tool. This is where they can be very helpful. So what I'll do first is grab my Polar Grid tool, click and drag out the same settings we had before. And then I'm going to grab my Shape Builder tool. So again, over on the left hand side here, the shortcut is Shift and M on your keyboard. And you can see if I hover over any of these sections with it selected, I can create shapes from any of these. I can merge them together. That's the beauty of the Shape Builder tool. So what I'm going to do is holding Alt, I can remove sections. And all I need to do is click and drag over the sections that I want to remove. So I'll remove this kind of center circle here. And I'm going to create a letter C here. So again, still holding Alt, I'm going to click and drag over these sections on the right hand side and you will sometimes be left with the odd stroke that's just the nature of doing this so again I can just holding alt click and drag over this and that's going to remove it and I might actually remove one more layer of these circles here so again holding alt just take this out I can also merge shapes together so just clicking and dragging over two sections without holding alt that's just going to merge them together you can do this all around this letter C here so we'll do it on all of these inside sections and there you go. So I'll move this off to the side. We'll scale it up a touch as well. Just gonna bump the stroke weight up. And just like other objects, we can go up to Object and Expand. Click OK and we now have outlined strokes. I can go over to my Pathfinder tool and merge this all together. And we can always apply some color to this as well. We'll give it an orange color. That's a very quick use of using it. I'm going to drag out the same circle here. We'll do it a bit smaller. So again, holding Shift and Alt. So this is exactly the same. Again, we'll give it some stroke applied to it here and we'll just keep this quite thin for now. Sometimes it's easier to have a thinner stroke line when we are using the Shape Builder tool so we can see what we're merging together. Now I'm going to select the Rectangular Grid tool and in this case, I want to match up the number of columns and rows with how many circles we have here. So I'm looking at this polar grid we've created here. We essentially have five different sections or five different layers within this polar grid. So with my rectangular grid tool, I'm just going to click and drag. I'm just going to take each of the columns and rows down to zero. So just tapping the down arrow to get rid of the rows and then the left arrow to get rid of the columns. And I'll just add these back in one by one. So I know I want to basically create a grid of 10 by 10 here to match this circle. Pressing the up arrow, I can just add in rows this way. And it's sometimes easiest to actually just drag over the circle and we can actually just visually match this up. 10 rows, and again, we'll go 10 columns. Okay, so we have our 10 by 10 grid now. I'm just going to shift this over and align the right edge of our square grid here with the center of our polar grid. Okay, so that looks all aligned now. And lastly, I'm just going to actually drag a copy of our square grid here and just drag this down. And we're going to recreate the woodwork P that we had in our example. So I can select everything. And again, Shift M on my keyboard, I can grab my Shape Builder tool and holding Alt, I'm just going to get rid of a few of the bottom rows here. You'll see we will be left with some paths here and there. Maybe take one more. Once to get rid of the central area of the circle here, while holding Alt, I can just click and drag over all of this. I'm going to take the left portion of squares out as well. So it's really just about playing around with the Shape Builder tool. We've essentially got the grid to work with here. Okay, so down in this portion as well, just removing areas. So what I can start to do now is just start merging sections together, just clicking and dragging over any of the overlapping paths. Again, we can create sections from this. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going with this, just merging things together. And I want to create a kind of offset look at the bottom here, so I don't want a perfectly straight look at the end. OK, 
Okay, so that will do it for this example. One thing to note is when I was creating these shapes, all I was aiming to do in this example is making sure none of the lines were continuing over multiple layers in this example. So to create that offset floored look, that's just one of the things to watch out for. So again with this, I'll just select everything. Okay, so I'm just gonna bump the stroke weight up now. And you can see you do sometimes get some little artifacts like we have here. That's just part of trying to merge so many shapes and paths together. So you will end up with some of these types of things. I'm just going to use my direct selection tool. I'm just gonna go in and tidy some of these bits up. Quite often it's just a stray point. One thing that I would recommend is a quick way to get rid of this is just to press Command X to cut it away and you can sometimes reveal some of the things that are causing the problems. Grab my direct selection tool, delete these points and then Command F, Control F on a PC to paste it back in place. Okay, so you can see there's a few copies of this issue here. So with my direct selection tool still selected, again, press Command X, grab that, Command F to paste it back in place. Okay, so tidied up all of those points now. So all I need to do is select everything, bring this up slightly more, I'm gonna go to Object, expand click OK. I can always use my Pathfinder just to make sure everything's united here and then I'm just going to apply a nice colour to this. So we'll just go with this sandy colour, zoom out and there you go. There's two examples using the grid tools to help us build this together. So there you can see these tools are incredibly useful for creating precise grids to work from an illustrator. If you have any questions or would like to see any further examples of using these tools do let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, remember to hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and if you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course, visit graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time.